Hi, uh, good, evening, good afternoon everybody. So today uh, we are going to talk about uh, cognitive radio systems. Uh, <coughs> as, so uh, this is uh, a presentation from Leica Wireless and I welcome you all to the, this, this presentation. Let's go to the next slide. <coughs> so agenda for today's discussion is going to be like this. So first we are going to discuss about cognitive radio and uh, uh, some concepts involved in cognitive radios. Um, we are going to talk about a software defined radio platform uh, which is called Waveguru. It's a product from Deca Wireless Solutions. So we are going to discuss a little bit of details about the Waveguru SDR platform and uh, then we are going to talk about, uh, we are going to have a demonstration of a Waveguru SDR platform running a cognitive radio application. Followed by that, we are going to point out some of the specific research areas where the students and academicians as well as uh, researchers from industry uh, how they can utilize this SDR platform and what are the possible areas of research uh, in cognitive radio. Okay, So let's start off with the uh, question like um, what is cognitive radio? So uh, I think this is something which is uh, a very well known term in wireless world. Uh, the cognitive, cognitive radio. So, any answers like what is cognitive radio? So, okay, let's let's start with this picture. So, I like this picture because I found it on the internet, where like um, it is it is actually giving a very good picture of what exactly is happening, because it's always any technology is well understood if we know what is the challenge we are trying to address, right? So, the cognitive radio is a concept which is trying to address a particular challenge. So always the technology can be well appreciated provided we know what is the challenge it is addressing. So I found this picture very relevant and good. So uh, if, you, if you look at the top picture, right, top, or top portion of the picture, it is talking about uh, several lanes, right, where people are walking on the path and each path is dedicated for a particular application. So if you can see that the blocks over there, each one is talking about a particular application. Today, you can see these rows as the frequency bands and the way today's communication system works is a specific uh, band is dedicated to a particular application. So as you can see, like most of the lanes are free. This one lane which is crowded is your commercial radio, which is your mobile phone or cell phone or whatever. So th then, okay, it's like we have it is very similar to your real estate. The frequency bands are very limited and you cannot occupy more than what is available. So the question now is, okay, there are some frequency bands which are completely crowded. There are some frequency bands which are available, not so well utilized. How do we utilize that? Because these bands have been occupied over time and that cannot be just allocated to any application just like that. There are some guidelines, there are some uh, uh, requirements in terms of how a radio can utilize it. So this is basically the challenge which cognitive radio as a concept try to address. So the, as you can see the, with the cognitive radio the way it's going to work is um, we are going to work on a particular application which is uh, not bind to a particular frequency band rather it can actually work in any available band. So the rest of the presentation is going to discuss about what are the challenges involved in doing this? Because it looks very simple from the diagram. Okay, what I'm doing is I have a, a frequency band which is available and I'm trying to utilize it for my application based on the availability. So the question is the frequency which is available, I should know. How I will know whether to use that particular frequency or not is a decision to be made. There are a lot of parameters involved. So we are going to discuss in detail uh, some of these uh, uh, terminologies involved in uh, cognitive radio. So any questions so far? So we'll go to the next. So uh, yeah, let's look at uh, the, the textual definition of uh, cognitive radio. So cognitive radio is an adaptive intelligent radio and a network technology. Of course it has to take care of the links and that can automatically detect available channels in a wireless, wireless spectrum called wide spaces. This is some, some terminology we will be quite often be using throughout the discussion. So wide spaces, say wide spaces are those bands which are unused, like some frequency bands which are left vacant 
when there are two applications running, the in-between bands which are unused are called white spaces. So, and adapt transmission parameters enabling more communication to run concurrently and also improve radio operating behavior. Basically, it's like not only it's going to utilize the white spaces, it is also going to do some kind of uh, um, uh, the transmit waveform generation such a way that it is going to coexist and it is going to occupy the bandwidths in a very optimum fashion where it is not occupying bandwidths which are uh, not more than required, like very optimum, right? So the, this is the the definition of uh, the cognitive radio. Uh, basically, say, yeah, when, when we talk of all this flexibility, right? Say when we are looking at a flexibility in terms of receiver, flexibility in terms of transmitter. So there are two parts involved. One is in terms of the concept, learning things and doing things. So for doing things, you need a platform. Generally, in most of the cases you need a software defined radio which is the basic fundamental uh, hardware that is required to realize a cognitive radio system. So basically it is it's the software defined radio which provides the platform on top of it where you are going to generate, you are going to build your cognitive radio system. So um, some of the possible functions like as I mentioned the, the what we want to achieve involves a specific set of functions to be implemented by a cognitive radio. So, uh, the possible functions of a cognitive radio includes um, like first it has to know what is the geographic location it is with respect to the other radiating transmitters that is one of the requirement and it has to identify and also authorize the user and it has to sense all the neighboring wireless systems which is in the neighborhood and uh, adjust its power such a way that it is going to uh, adjust both its power and modulation characteristics such a way that it is going to coexist with the primary user or rather all primary users. So we will go to the next slide. So the cognitive radio is a, a, a concept which is which is in evolution, basically it is evolving. So if you look at the way it has evolved, say it has started off with the SDI platform which is the basis hardware and first people started implementing adaptive radio. The description of adaptive radio is something which is capable of monitor own performance and also constantly adapts to achieve best or efficient communication which has been the previous generation wireless systems. Right? So adaptive radio is uh, the first step towards the cognitive radio. The, and today we are discussing about cognitive radio again, it is one step ahead of uh, adaptive radio wherein uh, cognitive radio is aware of its environment as well as state of operation. So, um, uh, example is basically like um, uh, I'm, if you are going to take um, uh, some localization where like you are going to sense the spectrum, check the usage, how it is used and you are going to also consider the local regulations because there is something called homologation where a specific region or a specific country has its own definition of what band should be used for what purpose, what should the adjacent band emission and things like that. So it is the radios is going to be uh, aware of all these parameters when it is transmitting and also it is capable of learning its environment like what is, what is happening in the neighborhood in terms of other wireless systems. So uh, and also it is able to make some decisions like uh, constantly comparing any changes in the spectrum it is utilizing as well as other spectrums. Basically it is, it is continuously monitoring the available spectrum and based on that it is going to change its decision. So, uh, when, when you say like monitoring the uh, spectrum, say you are operating in frequency band F1, let's say the analog band primary user comes up or, or I see that there is some kind of interference that is happening, then you are going to take a decision which is going to move to another band. So, there has to be a protocol which is sitting above this cognitive radio which will communicate with the other end where both the transmitter and receiver switches over to the a new frequency band. So that is the kind of capability we are talking and the next step is probably the, it is something which is again another uh, area which is under research, I mean there is an intense research which is going on in terms of intelligent radios. So intelligent radios is again another one step ahead of uh, uh, cognitive radio which involves some kind of techniques like beamforming or multi antenna MIMO systems where uh, it can actually adapt to the situation better and it is going to utilize a far more advanced techniques in terms of uh, ensuring higher uh, spectrum efficiency as well as uh, a better coexistence with the primary user. So, move to the next slide. 
So, uh, yeah, the cognitive radio today can be classified into, in multiple ways. Some of the classifications are like, okay, to what extent it has been implemented. Let's say a cognitive radio is called a, a full cognitive radio, means it is able to take account of all the parameters involved in the link, wireless link. And uh, so, in case of spectrum sensing cognitive radio, it is a very simple method where I sense the spectrum which is available and I just start my link there and that's it. So this is a very basic form of uh, cognitive radio whereas the full cognitive radio talks about continuous monitoring, learning the situation and adapting to it, both network and radio parameters. Right? So based on like actually the, the frequency band where it operates because that's another important parameter because uh, uh, when you are operating in an unlicensed band you have a lot of uh, freedom in terms of the way you have to operate compared to when you are trying to operate in a licensed band. So today there are a lot of standardization that is happening in terms of cognitive radio where they are trying to bring in this cognitive radio concepts to some of the uh, standardization, some of the standardization like ITPLE 802.22 or uh, there is one of the, uh, the, the standard which is working on uh, TV band white spaces. Right. So, uh, license band is something which is uh, like will have more stringent requirement in terms of uh, emission mask, the way you are going to operate and you have to be far more sensitive towards primary users when you are trying to operate in uh, license band. So that's something which opens up a lot more perfection, a lot more quality in terms of radio. So that is one way to classify licensed and unlicensed band cognitive radios. Okay. So yeah, this is uh, this is about uh, some of the unlicensed band cognitive radios it, it uses uh, something like uh, the spectrum available for um, 802.15, which is uh, ZPR or Bluetooth, and um, the already there is a cognitive radio approach being used as part of the unlicensed band. These two standards share the same spectrum. Based on availability of the spectrum, they they come they come up and start utilizing the band. So if you look at the bands which are used for Bluetooth and uh, Wi-Fi, they are pretty much the same. But they sense which band is being used and they are going to choose the right band for their uh, link. So already some of the cognitive radios concepts have been adapted by some of these uh, standards. So what are the next question? Yeah. On the Wi-Fi, does it mean that today's uh, Wi-Fi adapter will do that? Yes. It, is, it has got multiple frequency bands which is goes from, uh, there are three non-overlapping bands and there are some overlapping bands like up to 16. Mm -hmm. So based on the, uh, the neighborhood, it can have uh, another Wi-Fi system or it can have a Bluetooth or it can have ZP. Any of these technology would have been there already by the time this Wi-Fi comes up, that's part. Then it is going to sense what is, oil, what is running already. Based on that, it chooses a band which is good for itself. So that is one of very early stage adoption of uh, cognitive radio concepts. So yeah, like uh, as, as we discussed, so the, there are some of the functions to be executed by a cognitive radio is uh, like let's, let's look at some of the important functions that a cognitive radio uh, does in order to uh, work in the way it is supposed to, right? So uh, the first one is power control, of course, this is a very important uh, function of any radio. So the power control ensures that we are opting, operating at an uh, optimum power. So for any wireless communication system, this power control is utilized as an important function to save power. Whereas when it comes to cognitive radio, it is not only the objective is to save power, it is also, it has got an objective to ensure that there are no adjacent band interference, number one. It is trying to operate with sufficient power so that if there is any other link, primary user that comes up, he has very less amount of interference. And also like, say, it is also going to be aware of the kind of SNR, the kind of coding game. So it is going to try to park the power such a way that it is at very minimum. So that cognitive radio uh, requires a power control algorithms which are far more efficient than what is required in traditional uh, wireless systems. So there are a lot of research that is happening, probably we will cover that as part of the later session. And uh, spectrum sensing is another important uh, area where 
this is an input to, for making a decision on the spectrum. Say if a cognitive radio has to make a decision, the input for making a decision on using a particular band is based on the spectrum sensing. So there are various different techniques which are used in spectrum sensing. So we are going to discuss a little bit more uh, details like um, say there are uh, various methods for detecting the existing user because it's a very challenging job because uh, uh, it can be as simple as sensing the power or it can it may expect you to detect the transmitter itself what kind of transmitter is being used what kind of modulation scheme what kind of uh, duplexing methods are being used so basically the transmitter detection tries to go one step above than just looking at the power it is going to look at the complete details what kind of technology what kind of uh, uh, spectral mask is it a time TDD system or is it a burst rate transmission, is it a continuous transmission, something like that. And wideband spectrum sensing is something which is going to look at, it is very, very good in terms of uh, uh, implementing a, a cognitive radio system because it's going to look at very wide band simultaneously and it can make a decision whether the band I'm using is it fine or not, whether I can use an adjacent band which is better than the current band. So, but the major disadvantage with wideband scanning today is the amount of bandwidth it's going to operate take, requires a lot of computing power. So there can be a lot of research that can, that can go in how to optimize this because today we have radios that are available which can work in wider bands. Again wider band when I say it, it is like let's say I'm trying to operate in 2 megahertz. I can consider a 10 megahertz kind of bandwidth or I can consider 20 megahertz kind of bandwidth based on my processing power. I can start monitoring my current channel what I'm operating on and I also I can start looking at adjacent bands. So that is something which requires a lot of processing power but that, that can be very helpful in terms of adapting to the situation. So the third one is null space based uh, uh, cognitive radio which is basically like very similar where uh, you look for the white spaces, you combine multiple white spaces to form one band and start operating. So in that case we are going to adapt for null spaces which are available at different places you are going to monitor and use them. So these are different methods for uh, spectrum sensing. So let's look at the, the first method which is uh, transmitter detection. The transmitter detection uh, again can be classified into different uh, ways. Right? So the first is a matched filter detection. Basically it's uh, those who are uh, working in communication and signal processing. It's a very simple, like the match filter is something where you are trying to take a signal as a reference. You are going to create, a, you are going to match the uh, transmitted signal such a way that you know, like uh, what what is being transmitted. This is exactly what I said. You are going to find out exactly what is this technology on the other side. Let's say I know there is a uh, a Wi-Fi system which is running. I know every Wi-Fi system has a beacon. I look for the beacon. It's like a match filter kind of uh, detection. So I just look for that beacon, I know there's a Wi-Fi system which is running on the other side. Or I look for a preamble which is used in WiMAX or a PSS, SSS kind of synchronization signal in LTE and things like that. So you are able to do a match filter detection. The second one is, like let's say I'm not going to look at details of the, the signal what I'm receiving, but I'm just going to look at the power, like energy in the spectrum. This is another method for detecting a transmitter in a particular frequency band. So, uh, so this is another method which is uh, uh, which has got its own advantage and disadvantage. Like obviously, like if you are taking something like uh, a, a energy detection, uh, you are going to look at a particular band, you are going to look at some power, but there is no way you can find out how much power is lower for me to consider this band is available because there will be situations where there is a user the cell edge whose power is so low that you are going to you end up making a decision that there is no user there but you are interrupting a primary user. So there are a lot of research which is happening where since it is computationally less intensive, easy to implement, there are a lot of research in terms of finding out how the energy based detection can be utilized for cognitive radio. So um, yeah, there, are, there is uh, something called uh, cyclo stationary feature detection which is also another uh, method uh, for detecting any man-made transmitters because you can differentiate a, a wireless application to be a, a signal which is generated from a 
uh, modern where like either they are going to use some of this uh, BPSK, QPSK, some kind of a modulation scheme and all these schemes exhibit a, some kind of a behavior which is called cyclostationary uh, behavior where it is there is some kind of periodicity. Let's say if you take a QPSK symbol, every symbol duration there can be a one of the four possibilities. So there is some kind of a periodicity. So you can utilize this feature for detecting the transmitter. So this is another method for detecting the transmitter. We'll go to the next. Uh, yeah, there is another technique which is called moment-based detection. So uh, and uh, then wideband uh, spectrum sensing we have already discussed. So this is something which is going to run through a, a huge band where it's going to monitor the frequency, uh, the, the spectrum power at various different uh, places. So the, this wideband spectrum is also is an interesting uh, different way of uh, doing the spectrum sensing for wideband. Uh, uh, for wideband, so there's something called cooperative detection. So basically, it's going to take uh, available database of primary user, something of the sort of uh, uh, Google is maintaining a database where it is going to give a list of frequencies and also to whom it has been allocated. So you know, what, like some kind of a uh, prior information that who is using this band, then you can adapt your uh, uh, transmission in a particular band with, once you know the technology for which this particular band has been allocated. So, and also there is a interference based detection. Like basically you just go for the power and determine the interference, then make a call. So, uh, the null spaced uh, uh, detection is another method which we have already discussed. So, um, Primarily here again the the idea here is to reduce the interference which is caused to the primary user as, as much less as possible. So we are going to work on the null spaces only, we are not going to occupy the band which is used by the primary user. So the next step is basically like among the functions, first we are going to do the spectrum sensing, then we are going to do the spectrum management. Say like once the spectrum is sensed, you have to manage the spectrum, whatever you're going to operate. So that is that is what uh, is the next step. Basically, it's, it involves spectrum analysis and spectrum decision. So spectrum management involves two functions. One is spectrum analysis, where you can de determine based on certain thresholds. It can be a power threshold. It can be uh, detection of the actual user, various methods. You can come up with some parameters where you're going to set some minimum threshold to determine whether a primary user is available or not, right? So is it a white space or not? So based on that, you can you can you can make a decision based on your spectrum analysis, and finally you are going to take a decision whether you are going to use white space or whether you are going to go, go coexist with the primary user. All these decisions are part of the uh, spectrum management. So the each each of these functions require a lot of research, and it can be like very specific to a specific scenario where the learning the, the method of learning method of making the decision and method of using the spectrum, all these three things can play a role in terms of uh, the functioning of uh, overall uh, cognitive radio system. Go to the next slide. So, um, yeah, there are uh, different approaches for spectrum management. Basically, this is uh, spectrum management is one of the important uh, uh, function, function of uh, efficient working of uh, cognitive radio. So, the, the so some of the approaches are like spectrum mobility, basically like a uh, user is uh, trying to operate on a white space where he has come up and he is operating. Once a primary user comes up, he seamlessly switches over to another uh, frequency band. So basically like aims to use the spectrum in a dynamic manner by allowing the radio terminal to operate in the best available frequency band. And whenever there is a primary user that comes up in a band, he switches over to another band and wherein like not causing any uh, interference to the primary user as well as not getting hurt with the primary uh, user communication. So that is spectrum mobility. The second method is spectrum sharing where again this is a very inward subject where you are going to operate on a band which is used by the primary user. You are not going to switch over to a different band but rather you are going to learn uh, in terms of what kind of uh, mode it is operating, what kind of SNR it can operate. Based on that, you are going to use certain transmission technique where you are not going to interfere with the primary user. 
they're going to ensure the primary user and the car degraded both are going to coexist in the same frequency band. And sense, sensing based spectrum sharing, this is uh, um, uh, basically it's used in um, a licensed band where the method of usage of spectrum is already known. Basically, let's say there's some kind of frequency hopping or a time division duplexing. Whenever the spectrum is not utilized, it is sensed and only those time slots are used. So this is one of the examples for uh, sense, sensing based spectrum sharing. Go to the next slide. So, uh, yeah, we talked about uh, various different options, but let's see like what are the options we have in terms of ensuring that when I transmit a signal, it is not interfering the primary user. Some of the standard or uh, the well-known techniques uh, for achieving a advanced uh, transmitters are like beam forming. That is going to provide you some kind of a spatial multiplexing where you are going to create your own channel over the air through the beam forming and that is going to reduce the interference from the primary user. And you can try to operate on the white spaces by using a highly efficient uh, multi-antenna MIMO system where you are going to increase the number of bits per hertz thereby occupying lesser bandwidth. You can operate with less bandwidth and you can see higher bit rate. The other method is like you can coexist with a primary user by using direct spread, 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 spread spectrum sequence where the, the signal which is used for communication looks like a white noise. It's like a flat signal where it's going to act as a individual uh, noise for a, a primary user and you're going to use the existing bandwidth, the same bandwidth for operating in uh, uh, the same as primary user. Go to the next slide. Okay, it's still some more. So, deep about uh, yeah, this is like okay. So, we talked about uh, uh, the quality of radio concepts and uh, some of the terminologies involved and some of the functions which are to be executed by a quality of radio. So, uh, I would like to give a brief introduction about uh, Leica wireless solutions uh, and uh, also like what is our uh, motivation in terms of community of radio. So, for the, there is a, we know that there is a scarcity in terms of uh, spectrum, right? So, um, there are a lot of new applications, wireless applications that are coming up and uh, obviously with newer applications coming up, we have more demand for the spectrum, thereby this crowding is increasing day by day. So, uh, the, as we have seen so far, like the community of radio is the right approach where it can solve this problem. And as a company who is focused in wireless communication, uh, we would like to be part of this uh, um, uh, the evolution in uh, radio systems. Uh, Leica Wireless Solution has a, a platform called uh, WaveGuru, which is a software defined radio platform. Uh, it can actually provide a very good basis for some of these researches, some of the experiments, or like some of the work that is happening in cognitive radio area. So we think probably like we can we can be part of this ecosystem where we can help researchers and academicians to come up with a lot of new uh, new improvements in cognitive radio techniques. The next slide. So uh, these are the, some of the features which are provided by the Bayguru uh, SDR platform. Uh, operating frequency from 60 megahertz to 60 gigahertz. Uh, we can support SISO, 2 cross 2 MIMO and 4 cross 4 MIMO. It can operate in both TDD and FTD mode. Uh, you can tune the bandwidth starting from 200 kHz to 56 MHz because these are very important parameters for a cognitive radio, supporting a higher bandwidth, narrow bandwidth, as well as uh, operating frequency range, a wide operating operation operating range. And it has got a very superior uh, noise, uh, the, the noise figure uh, of less than 2.5 dB. And it can be uh, demonstrated that for a 200 kilohertz bandwidth, we can achieve a rejection of up to 50 dB. The front-end filters, there is a, a bunch of tunable front-end filters which is programmable, which can help in terms of reducing the adjacent band interferences. And uh, we can program both transmitter and receive gain from 63 to 90 dB kind of range. And uh, the maximum transmit power as part of the wave group is today 7.5 dBm. But on request, there can be an additional component like power amplifier which can be added to the system where you can increase it all the way up to 30 dB. Go to the next slide. So, uh, in terms of uh, the power available, the processing power available on the platform, it has got a dual core ARM processor with FPGA fabric 
Um, so uh, it has got a RAM, flight will be our 2 GB RAM option. It's got a flash, a real time clock, a gigabit Ethernet port, and a lot of other user interface uh, ports are available. We'll go to the next slide. So the, the, basically, the, 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 to summarize the whole, the whole uh, platform, it's a SDR platform which is using a Zinc 7000 based uh, SOC. Uh, and it has got a, one of the most efficient uh, multi-core ARM processor for processing some of the embedded uh, requirement. Uh, FPGA fabric provides a, a very good uh, computation power for single processing kind of application. Uh, it has got an extensive OS middleware and stack ecosystem. Um, we can implement some of the high level security and uh, reliability features. And uh, so the, there is a list of APIs which is provided by Leica Wireless for implementing the cognitive radio, like say we provide several APIs where you can realize your cognitive radio system or you can do a lot of your research work which can aid your research work. So we'll go to the next slide. So this is how a typical uh, a demo setup looks like. So you're going to see the actual demo later, like in a couple of uh, minutes. So um, it has got a, a, a multiple antenna system which is connected to the uh, transmitter and receiver, receive port of Vegaru box. And there you can see that there's a spectrum analyzer showing the transmit spectrum from the uh, SDI platform. So the way it works is the, a monitor and a keyboard is connected directly to the SDI platform and entire computation of uh, software development happens on top of this box. And a, 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 mini, a simple application is provided as part of the demonstration which can be enhanced, which can be utilized for building the cognitive radio system. Go to the next slide. So in terms of block diagram, say since it was a picture, so I thought of providing a diagram where say you have a FM antenna and then wideband antenna which is combined and put into the transmit and receive antenna of the SDR platform. So the application what has been provided as part of this uh, uh, SDR platform is like this. So you are going to have a, a simple application demonstrating a broadband spectrum scanning. User can configure start frequency, end frequency, and the bandwidth. The bandwidth can be like 200 kilohertz, 500 kilohertz, or some of these steps. The, as a simple application for spectrum analysis, the user is asked to feed a particular threshold because the, the entire spectrum scanning is based on the power, not on based on the uh, transmitter detection me mechanism. So um, you can actually mention the power to determine what is white space, what is not white space. So based on that, the spectrum analysis application will return a bunch of frequency bands which are lower than the threshold. Right? So once spectrum analysis is done, there is an option where you can bring up a transmitter, like you can transmit a waveform on a selected frequency band and that can be utilized for uh, testing okay whether you have spectrum analysis and spectrum decision is correct or not. So these are the basic functionalities which are provided as part of the cognitive radio system application along with WaveGuru uh, SDI platform. Go to the next slide. So uh, so like say uh, you are now going to switch over to the uh, demonstration of this particular application uh, and uh, then we will get back to the some of the research areas which are uh, which are actively pursued by a lot of uh, different uh, institutions. So we'll discuss a little bit more about that. So this is our uh, cognitive radio demo setup. So we have our WaveGuru SDR. This is a monitor connected to WaveGuru SDR, and WaveGuru SDR is connected with two antennas. This one is the between 800 megahertz to 2.7 gigahertz antenna. This one is FM antenna. So both are connected to the receiver of the WaveGuru SDR. And from WaveGuru SDR, transmitter is connected to the spectrum analyzer to view the transmitted frequencies. Uh, hi, I'm going to start with the cognitive radio application demo. So first, I'm going to scan the FM uh, band. So, here we can see. 
would be scanned from 70 to 109 megahertz with 500 kilohertz step size. So what we can see is the frequency versus RSSI. So this is a spectrum scanning. So this data will be logged and will be viewed in the cognitive radio application. So to plot the data, we have the cognitive radio GUI. So here we can see the different frequencies on x-axis and the RSSI in DVM, DVM on y-axis. So we can see the values ranging between minus 96 dBm to around minus 76 dBm. So we can have, let's say we can transmit somewhere between minus 85 or 90 dBm. So this GI will give you the one idea so that we, where we can do the transmission. So to do the transmission we have to go back to our application. So I am going to run it again. So we can generate one report between different different bands based upon the RSSI. So let's say I want to just create two bands. So ranging between minus 80 and minus 90. So here we can see this report. So we can see the frequency bands available between minus 90 dBm to minus 120 dBm. So we will have different different uh, continuous frequency bands. So this is from minus 80 to minus 90 dBm. So this will also will give a clear picture like what band we can operate based upon our RSSI thresholds. So let's say I want to transmit now. So we have to press 1. So we can give a bandwidth for the transmission. But then we can also give the whatever uh, band we have scanned. So in that we can give some frequency from where we can check for the transmission. Yeah. Okay, so after entering the desired uh, bandwidth, we will give the start frequency from where the frequency search will happen. So I give the same start frequency and also till what frequency range we want to do the scanning. So once these two parameters are given then we have to give the RSSI threshold. So what is minimum threshold we are going to look for. Let's say I give minus 85 dBm. So here we will have the this frequency candidate to be uh, valid for the transmission. So now we can do the transmission on this frequency with default FIR filters or the user FIR filters. So I am going to be going to use the default FIR filters for the transmission. So for that we have to press 2. So now the transmission has started on the 70.25 MHz. So we can see on the spectrum analyzer. So we can see previously there was nothing down the transmission has started on the 70.25 MHz. Okay, now we can go for the different different frequencies. Uh, let's say I want to continue searching the again some next valid frequencies. So to do that we have to press 1. So now we have next uh, valid candidate that is at 70.75 MHz. So same to transmit with the default FIR 2. Now we can see the frequency has moved to next frequency that is 70.75 MHz. Now this way we can sweep through different different uh, frequencies with uh, whatever threshold we have entered or now we can monitor the some valid frequencies 
from the receive side. So let's say I want to monitor 71 megahertz. So to monitor that, I have to press 2. So the frequency to be monitored, we have to enter. So that report of the RSSI will be given here. So now we can see the frequency is 72 meg frequency is having around minus 92 RSSI. So like this we can monitor the different different frequencies or we can continue the transmission to next frequencies. See we can we have now minus uh, around minus 85 threshold we have next is 71.25 uh, megahertz frequency available. So to transmit we have to press 2 and we can see the spectrum has moved to 71.25 megahertz. Yeah, so this way, so we can see that the spectrum has moved from 70 megahertz to now 71.25 megahertz. So like this, we can sweep to different different available frequencies using this application. exit from this application just uh, press 0 so this applic application will be closed uh, so say thank you uh, thanks so one quick uh, welcome back I uh, hope the demo helped you all understand the uh, capability of uh, Waveru SDF platform uh, so, uh, some of the areas uh, of research which, uh, which we think probably uh, this platform can help are listed in this slide. So, uh, it can be used as uh, part of broadband uh, uh, spectrum scanning, it can be part of uh, any algorithm development or research work in uh, spectrum analysis and decision. And also, um, we, have, we are providing several waveforms as well as the, the users can develop their own waveforms. Uh, transmit waveforms to meet the current radio requirements. So this this gives a, a list of possible areas for uh, utilizing this SDI platform for uh, research and also experiments. So uh, yeah, this this primarily like uh, uh, summarizes uh, the the entire uh, presentation. As well as I would like to talk a little bit more about uh, uh, go to the next slide. So. Uh, yeah, so um, like yeah, Leica Wireless is a, a leading uh, wireless uh, uh, communication system company. So we are headquartered in Bangalore. So you can reach us at ipbiz at leicawireless.com if you have any questions. As well as you can also download our uh, product data sheets from uh, leicawireless.com under the products page. As well as we have a separate web website for the WaveGuru SDR platform where you can get a lot of information and a lot of uh, information about uh, how users are using this platform, what experiments you can do, what kind of uh, research work has already utilized this platform. So uh, please do visit and uh, please write back to us if you have any questions. Thanks.